Hey guys, welcome back to day two of using Nix OS. Guess what? Um, we have OpenGL, uh, not OpenGL, we have Mesa 25.3 going on, which is great. It's exactly what I wanted. And we also have the Cache OS kernel. Look at that. Ah, finally. I am exactly where I was on Cache OS, which makes me happy. Now, I've been asked, am I enjoying Nix OS? Not really much to enjoy it's just another linux distro and once you have it all configured like exactly what you want you don't need much else it's not that rewarding believe it or not because with other distros you can get this done probably 11 times faster and more simplified now i do have some issues that we need to talk about okay uh the first one being that um hmm the documentation is complete and utter ass. Uh, <laughs> let me show you. Okay, so if you're a newbie and uh, you're jumping in for the first time and you look at this page or on the unstable version and you see this, add this to your flake. Huh? Uh, add this to your config. Huh? Uh, and again... It's just like, if you're on Home Manager, uh, your defaults if you're on Home Manager, and I'm just sitting here and like, what the hell is this? I have to use AI to translate most of this into English. I give it my config. I ask to translate this into, what is Flake Hub? What is Flake Hub? The hell is Flake Hub? Uh, what the hell is this? Nick's flake for too much bleeding on his own leads, yada yada yada. What? FH add show. Is this like, is this like flat hub, but for flakes? Oh, that's just awkwardly weird. What? Privately share and cache flax. Uh, Oh, oh, that's cool. See, this is probably going to take most of the work out of it. I like that. That's nice. Huh. Okay. Still doesn't excuse the bad documentation, though. Why is my camera always up there? It's like I'm constantly changing heights. I'm not. I'm just tall. Um, if we go to the NixOS uh, wiki, it's the same problem. You're given specific things to do, like, let's say, if we go to cups, where do you add these things? It doesn't give an example of where you should add it in your config. It just tells you, add it. But where? Where? Simply add these lines to your configuration. That one's understandable. You add that in, you're done. Uh, then there's these other things right here. Do we just add these randomly and not keep things clean? There's no detailed, like, example on the right side where it could be, right? It's just not there. Oh, wide. Wow, they actually use the full page width with wide. That's, that's hella cool. Look at that. That's better. But you understand what I'm trying to say. It's just messy. It's not written for a normal person to understand. And I know that might bother people. That opinion bothers a lot of people, but... If you're making a distro, you're going to have these random ass beginners trying it and they're going to get hella confused and give up. Instead, write it in such a way where anyone can get started. Like, here we go. Let's click the beginning. Beginning. I guess we have to click out there. Getting started. Okay, you, you got a manual. Let's click the manual. Installation, obtaining, installing, changing the configuration. Rebuild, test, reboot. Uh, so none of this actually mentions the configuration themselves. Configuration syntax. Okay. These are horrible examples of a syntax. For sure. Uh, yeah. Huh? Like this, this, this is the only part that actually looks decent. They're taking all these chunks and they're just throwing it out there. But they're not showing it as a complete config on the side 
That's the thing. Add it anywhere, they say. Well, that doesn't always work. Modularity. Like, look at that. Boot kernel. KVM Intel. And then it just goes on and on and on. It's not well done. And that's my main thing. And I doubt anybody's going to care in the next OS team enough to wander in to the manual and just start rewriting it, right? Like, what happens if we take this? We go over here and we just hop into Copilot. Can you rewrite this with better examples for beginners? Ah, it exceeds. Ah, that's too bad. Because when that means, oh god, I completely froze the page. Yep, I froze it. I'm guessing AI could probably do a better job than this. So, how would we handle this? Well, let's copy it. Let's nano it, and let's do nano. Um, let's call this NixOS Manual dot text and let's just place all that in there just like that it could be as messy as it needs to because copilot's pretty cool i know you're thinking microsoft 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 i don't give a fuck as simple as that rewrite this for beginners with full config examples for each line. And then I'm going to upload mine. No, it's gone. Okay, maybe I can only upload one thing at a time. All right, final login. Done. Okay, let's try this again. With better examples and proper details and a full example config. Then we're going to add it in. We're going to upload it and let's see what it does. Does anything, anything at all is better than what they have right now. Okay. Oh, look at that. The desktop environment, beginner friendly sample configuration. Oh my God. Look at that. It's totally passable. What you can do next. Look at that. It gave an example configuration. Isn't that amazing? Firefox, LibreOffice, VLC, GIMP, HTOP, NeoFetch. NeoFetch is dead, but you get the point. It gave an example configuration. Wow. Now imagine if we completely took it and used something like Cursor. Okay? Cursor's pretty cool. So I'm going to open the folder. I'm going to open as my home folder right there. I'm going to do this. Uh, do we have Grok or what? Models. Ooh, no thank you. No thank you. Go away, Gemini, your ass. Uh, let's get Grok 4 up in this. Gotch. And cool. these are the only two good AIs. Oh no, my friggin' webcam crashed. What the hell? Are you going to come back, little buddy? One sec. I got to fix this. All right, we're back. There we go. Um, can you do a complete rewrite of the Nix OS manual.txt to be user friendly with more detail for the end user? to fully understand everything going on with a full um, example 
config. I don't know if it's actually going to do it or not, but the point and example of all this is they could do a lot better if they really, really wanted to. But whether they're going to do it is another story. Okay, so let's talk about gaming so far. All right, switching back to the Cache US kernel. Gaming's been great. I've had zero issues. Guild Wars 2, we had some weirdness where we had better highs, but we had better lows, like higher lows, but the highs weren't where they should be. Going over the Cache US kernel, we now have our max highs and we now have better lows. So it's kind of, it's a weird trade-off. Networking, we are able to download things faster, which is nice. So our net speed is fully being utilized almost. It's not as good as it would be on Windows, but it still um, loads better than what it should be. By the way, I did end up making spaghetti. It was really, really good. And uh, I've been playing Metro Exodus. Okay, that's what we were playing today on stream. That ran beautifully, by the way. Did not have a single issue with that, which is nice. How do we how do we update this? Waterfall Beard Jor What the fuck is with these horrible names? Linux developers, stop. This is cringy as hell. Just just stop. Oh god. Oh no. Well, that's an update that we have to take a look at. I don't think I can update it until NixOS updates, so that's fun. But, uh, yeah. The reason I chose to do this on Epic is because Epic actually has the ability to, you know, force upload save files. Where the Steam version doesn't have it at all. So now we have our save file completely uploaded. And if anything goes wrong, I'm able to just jump on another version of Linux, use the same thing, force download after launching the game once, and we're good to go. So, yeah, I make my choices very carefully sometimes. Getting Mesa Git installed was a pain, but we did it. I'm going to show you. Uh, there it is, Mesa Git. See? Um, getting the Cache US kernel to be added to the config, actually compile and work was a pain. Sure, you can have it auto-compiled and ready to go, but there's no fun in that because it's not compiled for your exact architecture. I have Zen 5, uh, so there's a setting for that where you can end up optimizing it during compiling for Zen 5, and that's what I wanted to have in the first place. So, we got all this work done. Affinity now works. Uh, DaVinci's Resolve opens up. Functions works. Games work great everything is working but do i still like it the answer is no and again i'll say it the reason i don't like it is because of the way it handles itself its documentation is poor okay the configurations uh there should be a repo with basically configurations for every style of system possible like if you're a content creator or if you're just purely a gamer or you just want to browse the internet or you're trying to set up a server or you want to set up virtual machines things like that right you have all of this information available to you ready to go instead of just showing snippets of a configuration and being absolutely clueless it gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to add these specific things so that you're able to have the virtual machines you want have the information you need where you can slowly take these configurations apart and build your own or have an online configuration maker. That would be pretty cool. Hey, I want these programs. Hey, I want to use Mesa Git. Hey, I want to use the Cache OS kernel. And then it basically builds you out a specific configuration built for you. The same way that you can do it with Winget. Winget builds out a specific configuration for how you want to install your applications and other things. And it just goes with that. I think that would be so cool. Think about that. And it would be pretty easy to do. It would take all the information needed from multiple different sources and they would just converge on a single project. No GUI necessary. Just open a browser, go to NixOS uh, Configuration Maker, and boom, you have everything you needed to go. Out of the box. Same thing. Um, add a Flake Maker as well that, you know, gives you all of your packages and other things. 
show how home manager works. There's so many things they can do to improve upon Nix OS. But in a nutshell, day two has been great minus the struggles. Every day seems to be a different struggle with Nix OS. This was mine, messing it today. And home manager was not really that much of a problem, but yeah. I really do hope that things get better. Maybe we can get some GUIs for this, as I said, or everything's done on the web. That would be nice. I don't mind that at all. <sighs> the next day I will report on about NixOS is Monday to see if my uh, things have changed, if I'm having fun or not. It is kind of fun, but there's no feeling of accomplishment at the end when you do something. It's like there's just so much pain in between. And it's just like, great, that happened. We're finally done. <sighs> it's just, it's a feeling of why did that take so long and why was that so hard to do? So it's not as enjoyable as Arch Linux. It's not as enjoyable as Fedora. It's just, it, it's like a three out of 10 at most. We're dealing with Arch is a 10 out of 10. Dealing with Fedora is like a seven out of 10. Dealing with Pico S4 is a 10 out of 10. It, it's just, a, it's a constant struggle it's, and it's not worth it so far. All right. Well, there you go. That's my experience. I'm sure someone's going to tell me I'm wrong. They always do, but you can't take away my experience and crap on it because it's there whether you like it or not. So uh, tell me yours in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time. Bye everybody.